Big corporations, they're everywhere, dominating the skyline and shaping our world. They're like that drawer in your kitchen. You know the one, the one you avoid opening. It's full of random stuff, things you don't even remember putting in there. You've got a potato masher you haven't touched since 2008. It's just sitting there, gathering dust. There's a bag of rubber bands that's more knot than band. You keep it, thinking you'll untangle it someday. And is that a spork? A relic from some forgotten takeout meal? Why is there a spork in here? It doesn't belong, yet there it is. Corporate structures are kind of like that. They're complicated, they're messy, layers upon layers of departments and roles. And sometimes, they just don't make sense. Meetings that go nowhere, decisions that seem random. But here's the thing, we need to understand these structures. Why? Because they impact everything. Every decision, every strategy, from product development to marketing campaigns, every aspect is influenced by the corporate hierarchy. The way a corporation is organized matters. It affects efficiency, creativity, and success. So buckle up, Buttercup. We're going on a wild ride through the world of corporate hierarchies. Get ready to untangle the web. Let's break down this corporate jungle into bite-sized pieces. Most large corporations have three main levels. This is the tippy top, the head honchos, the big kahunas. They set the overall direction for the entire company. Think of this as the middle child of the corporate family. Each business unit focuses on a specific product line or market. They have some freedom, but they still answer to the corporate overlords. This is where the actual work gets done. We're talking marketing, finance, operations, the whole shebang. Each functional area has its own set of responsibilities, but they all need to work together. Because if they don't, let's just say it's not pretty. At the very top, we have top management. These are the CEOs, the CFOs, the folks whose names are on the building, or at least on the website. They have one job to make sure the entire company is moving in the right direction. They do this by setting the overall strategy. Think of it as a giant roadmap for the entire company. Where do we want to be in five years? How are we going to get there? What are our core values? These are the big existential questions that keep top management up at night. Section four, business unit managers, middle management, mayhem. Now, let's move on to the middle child business unit managers. These are the unsung heroes of the corporate world. These folks are responsible for a specific product, service, or market. They are the bridge between the high-level corporate strategy and the day-to-day -day operations. They have to translate that big, hairy corporate strategy into something a little more manageable. This involves breaking down complex goals into actionable tasks. Imagine you're the business unit manager for, say, a line of organic dog food. You're not just managing a product, you're managing a vision. The corporate strategy might be to increase market share in the sustainable pet care industry. This is a broad and ambitious goal. Your job is to figure out how to actually make that happen. This means creating a detailed plan that aligns with the overarching strategy. Do you launch a new marketing campaign? Perhaps a social media blitz to attract eco-conscious pet owners? Develop a tastier yet still sustainable dog food formula? Maybe even conduct taste tests to ensure quality? Partner with ethical pet influencers? Collaborations can amplify your message and reach a wider audience. The possibilities are endless and also slightly terrifying. The pressure is immense, but so is the potential for impact. Section 5. Functional Frenzy. Getting down to the nitty gritty. Finally, we arrive at the functional level, the heart of the operation. This is where the rubber meets the road, where plans turn into action. Or, in the case of our organic dog food example, where the kibble meets the canine, ensuring every bite is nutritious. Each functional area plays a specific role in bringing that dog food to market, from conception to consumption. Marketing creates ads that make pups drool, crafting messages that resonate with pet owners. Sales convince pet stores to stock the shelves, ensuring the product is available to consumers. Finance crunches the numbers to make sure everyone gets paid, including the pups, hopefully. They manage budgets, forecast sales, and ensure profitability. The key here is coordination, 
a symphony of efforts harmonizing towards a common goal. All those different departments need to work together seamlessly, like gears in a well-oiled machine. Otherwise, you end up with a marketing campaign for a product that isn't even available in stores. And nobody wants that, except maybe the competition, who would love to see you fail.